Hello. This is my first ever super awkward video for painting wagons. I decided that since I had started ordering these brushes from Europe that I would post an unboxing and go through some brush strokes because it can be very difficult unless somebody tells you as an artist what a brush is for. It can be difficult to figure out what brushes you prefer for your style. So I finally got these thanks to the wonderful customs restrictions overseas in the last couple months. I had to wait three months to get these and had to put a project on hold for my husband so that I could wait for nice brushes to do it. So this is the box I cut it open. It is Rosemary and Company. They're handmade in England. I know it sounds fancy and expensive, but the honest thing is it's actually cheaper than some place like Blick and much more reliable as far as quality of the brushes. So inside the box, let's see. There's the box. I just took these out. They have some little pamphlets, mostly with these that they sent me this time are mostly um, reviews by artists. Um, and they talk about what they like about Rosemary. And it's kind of fun getting these because you can go and look at artists and their styles and sometimes uh, the way that Rosemary has broken down some of their brush types is by artists. They've had an artist come in and help them design a new brush. And if you go through the catalog, I'll go get it at the end, you can actually select based on, just a second, based on the artist style that you like. So if you chose to do that, you could you do that. I actually did that with one of them. So they just have a little promotional thing in here. I've never heard of Dutch Art Box. I might look that up later. And here are the brushes. Got it taped down. And in this nice little package. I ordered quite a few this time. Uh, the reason for that, I ordered three the first time. Like this. And one more. I don't know where it is. I only ordered a few the first time. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> uh, because I wasn't sure about this company, whether, you know, because they actually are inexpensive brushes, whether they would be really bad. So I just ordered three. So here are the brushes. This is um, a rounded tip. I'll go get the catalog and I can give you all the right names, but it's a short filbert is what it's called and it's on the side this is a number four four is the size uh, it's not like golf they get bigger as you go up and then that one it's a comer it's a funny name it it thins out at the tip more than most would these are actually the same size uh, there we go but the amount of liquid that comes off the end when you use each one is significantly different. So Comer, and this is a short flat. It's the most one of the most basic oil painting brushes. I do oil painting, so almost all of these are oil painting or acrylic. And this is a sable brush. Um, a little bit more expensive but very common for oil painters. The texture is really nice. It's my first sable brush. It's nice to keep these little covers on there. And that's a round, it's basic round. This is another short flat but it's a very 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 small one. I'll put it in front of my hair then you can see right because it's black. Almost, not quite. Oh yeah, that's a smaller size. It's a size zero. You can get them smaller than this, but not in this particular style. You'd have to use a different design of brush 
and then this is another flat this is a bigger size this is supposed to be hog bristle I think if I, I'll have to look at my order form and then this is the smallest brush I have ever ordered <laughs> I've been struggling with the details on my husband's project so I ordered a three times zero triple zero one of the smallest ones you can get these are all long handled um, I actually don't even know if I care it's, if it's long handled, but at least it gives you more versatility with that longer handle. Typically they'll be about that long, seven inches, about there, and these are 11 inches. Uh, it makes it really, really helpful for storing them. So I actually store them all in a coffee can. Hello, messy desk. Right there. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this video. How do I do that? And I'll go grab the catalog and I will do some brush strokes so you can see what different brush strokes look like. All right, so this is the catalog. I really love this catalog. It's fun to just look through and you can look at all the different brushes. They tell you what they're for. So if you don't order anything from this company, I highly recommend you ask for a catalog. They should be able to send it to you for free. Um, and you can just look through, it's easier than reading it on the internet, and find out what your preferred starting point might be. Um, this is the Sable Blend. I've got little asterisks next to the ones I liked. So I got one of the Sable Blends, because I was reading, it says, uh, a mixture of Sable and Synthetic offers the best of both worlds. Sable holds the liquid and Synthetic offers the spring and durability and maintains a favorable price. It works for watercolors, oils, and acrylics. So they tell you right here, and on the website they'll tell you too, what to use it for. And maybe it, they might even give you some style points, like this is better for this style or that. And then these are some sets. You, if you really are indecisive, you can just say, oh, well, I want a set for this, and you can pick that too. Anyway, so I've got some Windsor and Newton oil paint. I kind of use random oil paints. I have I have uh, Old Holland white because I really, really care how good my white is and Old Holland is really good. And then I have Utrecht. I have Rembrandt. I have Windsor and Newton. I buy kind of expensive oil paints because I got really frustrated with my cheap ones and I started looking around for better ones. I think my paint on my palette is actually still wet. I'll just use that. All right. So, I'll break out the different types. I'm actually gonna go ahead and not do the teeny tiny one because it makes a teeny tiny line. I don't really think you need to know more than that. And I'm going to get rid of this one. So these are going to be different types. This is a round. This is a short flat. They call it a short flat bright. It makes a very bright line. And this is a uh, short flat also, but it's not a bright. So it makes a little bit of a more it doesn't put as much down at once and the same goes for this but this isn't a bright this or this isn't a short flat it's a comber so it's different altogether and then this is a filbert with the rounded tip so these are the ones I'm gonna look at let's see if I have any I don't think I have any more I have a filbert that I ruined I could show you this uh, what was this called what was this called I don't remember what this one was called. It's like a, it's a dagger. So it looks like a dagger. I've used this one with red, so it's stained. All right, so we'll start with the little ones. I'm gonna prime my paint brush with a little bit of very dirty paint thinner. It makes them easier to clean. 
in the end and sometimes the paint does not move very well. Let's see if I can turn the camera here. All right, so this is the Eclipse short flat. And I'm just gonna make very nice. You can make very thin lines. Let's do it this way. You can make very thick lines. You can make little, I just love that squareness to it. It, it lends a lot to a picture. Okay, so I'll set that aside. I'm gonna clean all these when I'm done. And then since these are similar, this is the comber. And I'm just loading the tips a little bit here. This is my very messy palette. So just loaded the tip a little bit. And you know what? The, the effect I get from this combing, you see how it broke apart. It, that's going to vary based on how much I've put on the brush. And you see, I have my fingers are way down here. I've got this huge long handle and I put my fingers all the way down there. That's just the way I am. I'm working on it. I'm learning new techniques. I'll load it up a little better. I'm actually, I've never used this brush, so I'm actually just going to tap it and try to break up the combs. There we go. And see, with a little pressure, yeah, it makes a nice little broken line. I'll hold it farther back too and see. So now since that one is similar to this flat bright. I will use a similar pattern with this and show you uh, the effect that it has. Just gotta get my paint thinner open. I don't like to leave my paint thinner open. It's technically odorless. Ah, there we go. But it it'll give you a headache, and it's not good if you're you're a painter. You're here all day, you know. And it's just not good to have that in your sinuses and in your lungs all day. Okay, similar technique. I'm gonna go ahead and just tap this lightly and see, this is very stiff. This is a very stiff brush and I could really work, I could go in circles and work it in and it wouldn't bend the brush at all. You can see that it's, it's really, quite a stiff and you're not going to get that nice see how soft that looks and this is not so this is for moving volumes of paint so I'm actually going to grab the whole pile so this is what this is for yeah you want to put a big pile of paint on the tip there okay so I need some more paint now since this is oil, I just set all these aside until I'm completely done. It They wouldn't be a problem until tomorrow or so. They'd start to get tacky and hard to clean. If I forgot about them until later tonight, it would be fine. Alright. And we will go ahead and prime up this dagger since it's the last of the ones with sharper edges. I'm just gonna... This one is an interesting one I haven't quite gotten used to yet. I'm gonna hold it way back here. It's kind of a classic oil paint hold. And just, just try to give it a nice edge. And then you can actually just use, I'm still holding it way back there, I just changed the angle. And just use a tip and it gives you such a nice textures. See that already kind of looks like grass or something. Yeah. So these are versatile. You can flatten them out. You can get these long pieces. You can put loaded up really heavy and get um, big sharp lines just like this one. Alright. 
Next, we'll do this filbert. Prime it up with a little bit of the center. And you can, you can dip it in the center and then just dab off a little bit, but it's still wetter on there. And since it's curved, I do want to make sure I get it up into a part of that curve at least, depending on the stroke I need. There you go. And then Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. That's going to make for really nice flowers and stuff there. I got to hold the corner of my paper. Really nice flowers. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so this is just a very soft, very kind of a feminine stroke almost, <laughs> as opposed to this one from the flat, bright. It's just jagged. Okay, last one. This is around. I'm going to pop the cover off of there. And it's got a sealer in there, so I'm just going to break a little bit. And you never want to mess up that point. You need a point on your rounds. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Totally changing my paint there. Water out after this. Okay, I remade the point after I broke it up. Just load it up there. Alright, one little clean corner here. That's all I need. So rounds. You can get those nice little ones. You can get a big. And ordinarily I would have put a little more, I think, on there to make that nice big stroke. And you can do you get more paint thinner. The paint will flow better if I put more thinner or liquid or something in it. So I get that point nice and well shaped there. And then I'm going to draw it. Light, heavy, light, heavy. So you can see this has great versatility. You can really open those bristles. But make sure when you're done with that, you go back on your palette and you straighten out that point. So you stroke like this and it's broken up and go and you straighten it out and you make sure it looks like that when you're done. And that is all of the brushes. So I hope that was fun. I have never done a video before but maybe I can find some good topics to do in a video later. If you have kids that like to paint this these brushes all work really good for acrylics too. You just thin it differently. You don't use paint thinner with acrylics. You use you can use water. They make other acrylic specific thinners. And uh, some of these brushes work for watercolor also. I don't work in watercolor very often. But if you have someone you know that paints or wants to, I would say this is a really great video for either you or them to watch if you want to get a gift for them or they are looking at brushes and don't know where to start. Anyway, I would love to know about other topics that anyone wants to hear about or over a video or an article form. That would be such a fun thing for me to do. So I'd appreciate that.